Hello everyone, I'm back again with another lecture today. This lecture is actually a continuation of my previous lecture on errors of refraction and today I'll talk to you about accommodation and hypermetropia. Why I'm discussing these two topics together is because of the close interrelationship between these two topics. So I'll start with an important concept of far point. Okay. So there's something called far point. What is this far point? So this is a point wherein if you keep an object, the image of this object is going to form a sharp focus at the retina. Okay. So I'll repeat it for you. So far point is a point wherein if you keep an object, the image of this object is going to clearly form at the retina. Okay. So we can have three conditions. Either we can have emetropia or we can have myopia or a patient might also come with hypermetropia. So where is the far point in emetropia? The far point in emetropia is at infinity. Where is the far point in myopia? The far point in myopia is a real point and it is located in space at a point in front of the eye. Whereas in hypermetropia, this point is virtual and this is located behind the eye. Okay. Now, what does this actually mean? I'll tell you. So, as we all know, in emetropia, the rays of light seem to be coming from infinity and they form a distinct image of the retina when the accommodation is at rest. However, in case of a, if myopia, if the rays are coming from infinity, they are going to focus at a point in front of the retina. So, obviously, the far point cannot be at infinity. So, where is it? Is it at a, is it, it is at a uh, real, it is actually a real point which is located in space at a point which is in front of the eye. Okay. So, what happens in hypermetropia now? Why is this point virtual? This point is actually situated behind the retina. Okay. So, why does this happen? I'll tell you. As we all know that in hypermetropes, the rays of light seem to diverge from a point. Okay. And this, and they appear diverging because this far point is located behind the retina. That is why this point is virtual. So obviously we all know that it will not be possible at all for us to keep an object here so that a distinct image is formed at the retina and that is why this point is virtual. So what is the problem here is that since we cannot put an object here so always the patient will have a difficult a difficulty in focusing of an object. The, this, since it can never be kept here Neither the person will be able to focus near objects, nor the patient will be able to focus objects which are situated at a distance. Okay, so what will happen is that these patients who have hypermetropia are very likely to go into amblyopia at an early age. So children who are born with hypermetropia, a difference in refractive error of approximately 1 to 1.5 diopters only is sufficient for them to go into amblyopia. Okay. But this does not happen in myopia. Why this does not happen in myopia is because the far point here is real. Okay, it is actually situated in space. So we can actually put, a, put an object here so that a clear and distinct image is formed at the retina. Okay, so this is the concept of far point. Okay, now let's for the time being forget about myopia and hypermetropia. Let's think about the emetro patient. So I repeat it again, see, the rays of light coming from infinity provided accommodation is at rest are coming to focus at the retina. Okay, so this is the normal condition. However, it's not always possible that every time the rays are coming from infinity. In life, we also have to do, uh, we, have to, uh, do we have to do near work. We also sometimes have to look at the clock. So you know, the places where these objects are placed keep on changing. So it's not always possible for the rays of light to, come, to be coming from infinity. Sometimes an object might be placed here. 
Sometimes an object might be placed here. So obviously the image will not always get focused on the retina. So for this, God has given us the mechanism of accommodation, which is my first topic. Okay. So what happens in this accommodation? If an object, suppose, is placed very close to the retina, we have a beautiful structure in an eye, which is our lens. This lens will change its shape and help us to focus the image on retina. Okay. Now, how does this happen? How does this lens work? So, a lens is a structure which has an elastic capsule. Okay. The anterior curvature of this lens is 10 millimeters. And the posterior curvature of our lens is 6 millimeters. And the beauty of this structure is that this anterior surface can keep changing its curvature. Okay. From 10, it can go on to 6. Okay. So what can happen is that Suppose an object is placed here. This lens can change its curvature, become more steep and form an image at the retina. If an object is further placed close here, this lens can become more steep and get the image will be focused at the retina. Okay, but there's a limit to this. Okay, you cannot go beyond a certain point because after six millimeters of curvature, the lens cannot be on more. The lens cannot bend more, so it can go only up till a maximum of six millimeters, and that is where is your near point. Okay, so I spoke to you about far point, and then there is a near point. So again, far point is a point wherein if you keep an object without accommodation, the image is going to get focused at the retina. And near point is a point wherein if an object is there, after maximum accommodation, it's going to form an image at the retina. So, okay. so the difference between the, this far point and this near point is actually your range of accommodation. Okay. Accommodation. And the same thing if I express in terms of diopters, it is going to be called amplitude of accommodation. Okay. So it's going to be called amplitude of accommodation if I express the same thing in terms of diopters. Okay. So I hope I'm very clear till here. Okay. Now I would like to tell you that what exactly happens in accommodation. So this accommodation, it is basically a reflex, okay, which is actually a triad. So in this triad, what is the first thing that happens? You have increased convexity of the lens, okay, of the curvature of the lens rather. So the anterior surface of the anterior curvature of the lens will become steep. So there is increased convexity of the curvature of the lens. Another thing what will happen is will be convergence. Now what is this convergence? Suppose these are my two eyes and I am observing a clear object. Both these eyes will come together and will converge at this point, okay, where this object is placed. So this is called convergence. And the third thing which is going to happen is called meiosis. Meiosis means the pupil will become smaller. So why this meiosis has to happen? Because the object is closed, placed very close to the eye, there will be a lot of light or there will be a lot of rays coming from the 
object. So, in order to limit the amount of light which is entering into the eye, the pupil will become small and also in order to cut all the peripheral rays which are arising from this object, the pupil is going to become small and that is why this meiosis happens. Okay. Now, I'd like to tell you that all these things can occur independent of each other also but this reflects together is called a combination which will help you to see objects which are situated close to the eye. Okay. And one more very important thing is that accommodation will occur to the same amount for both eyes. You cannot have uh, you cannot have two diopters of accommodation for one eye and four diopters of accommodation for another eye. Okay, so whenever the accommodation is there, both the eyes have equal amount of convergence, meiosis, and convexity of the lens. So obviously, we'll understand that this accommodation cannot help us to correct difference in refractive errors between the two eyes because it is accommodating to the same amount. Okay. very clear with this accommodation. But this always does not happen that ideal accommodation is taking place. So we have some errors in accommodation also which take place. Okay. So we are talking to you about errors of accommodation now. So what is the first error of accommodation? Press file. Just remember from my last class I told you that press biopia is not an error of refraction. It is actually a physiological process. It's actually our lens becomes more hard and it is unable to you know become very compliant with the amount of near work we are doing. Okay. So the lens actually becomes brittle in simple words if you want me to say. So the lens will not be able to bend that much, will not be able to increase its convexity that much and this is actually an age related process. Okay, so what happens in this press biopia? First of all, you will have sclerosis of the lens. Okay, so the fibers of the lens are becoming hard and hard because of the age. Okay, so first is sclerosis of the lens. Second thing which will happen is that the capsule of the lens will lose its elasticity. Okay. And the third thing which is going to happen is that your ciliary muscle will have a decreased tone. Okay, so I'll tell you one thing that this is our lens. Okay, and this is my suppose ciliary muscle, and these are the suspensory ligaments or the zonules. So what happens in uh, when accommodation is taking place? This ciliary muscle will contract. Okay. This will contract. And because of this, the ciliary body will be drawn close to my lens. Okay. So when it is uh, drawn close to the lens, what will happen? These zonules become lax. Okay. When these zonules become lax, there is decreased tension of this elastic capsule of the lens. And because of that, it is going to become more convex. And that is how the convexity of the lens will increase. But what happens in press biopia? There is sclerosis of the lens. This lens altogether is hard now. Okay. And it has an increased refractive index. So it cannot bend that much. This capsule has lost its elasticity. The capsule will not be that elastic for it to become convex. And the ciliary muscle which was contracting has lost its tone. So what happens is that it's not able to contract that much, and that is why what will happen is what will happen is a condition for press biopia. You must know that it is a physiological process, and it will happen in all the individuals. Okay, irrespective of males, females, it has no gender predilection. It will happen in males and females equally, and it is an age-related process. So suppose if it's a young patient. young patient say of 10 years of age okay 
the near point the point the near point which i told you is actually 7 cm for this picture so he can focus objects which are placed as close as 7 cm from the eye however if it is a if it is a patient of maybe 20 years of age this far point might not be 7 cm it may be it comes to around 14 cm at 60 years of age we have literally no accommodation okay so even if this same object is placed at 25 cm a person of 60 years of age is not able to focus so what is basically happening is this near point of the eye is going keeps on moving away it is receding behind and behind with age okay so that is what is happening in case of breast eye here so the near point keeps on receding away from the eye and the person is not uh, not able to focus near objects okay so how do you correct this breast myopia the easiest way would be spectacles so get convex spectacles convex lenses to this patient so how do you get convex lenses suppose a patient of 60 years of age comes to you do uh, give the proper amount of distance correction and adding to that distance correction you give some amount of near correction you must know that the near correction is in addition to the distance correction okay so it's basically an add to the distance you can do this obviously it's an old patient the lens becomes cataract so you can also do a cataract surgery and then give spectacles so there are several surgical options also which may be combined with cataract and you can actually treat breast myopia one of them is that you can do a cataract surgery correct distance vision and give spectacles for near you can do that another thing you can do is that there is something called bifocal bifocal or multifocal intraocular lenses okay so you can give bifocal or multifocal lenses this can also be done for spectacles okay on spectacles also you have bifocals so this is your near segment which actually contains the add and this is the distance segment similarly you can do this in cases of intraocular lenses also so you can have bifocal lenses you can also have multifocal lenses multifocal lenses will not have this clear cut demarcation between the near and far the they will just be a very you know they'll be actually the power will be gradually progressing towards the near so you know suppose you have 3 here it will become 4 here it will become 5 here and then finally become 6 here so it's going on progressively increasing towards the near segment so this is what happens in case of multifocal lenses the second option is that you can also give accommodating accommodative eye wells so this is a novel concept where you put an intraocular lens and this is actually able to accommodate this rather is not a real accommodative process that happens in case of crystalline lens this lenses are so placed that you know whenever the person is trying to be able to uh, trying to do near work this lens will move close to the eye and that is how it will simulate the process of accommodation it's not really accommodating it's actually a pseudo accommodation that is taking place so you can go for accommodative eye lens the third thing you can do is you can go for something which is called mono vision okay so what is this mono vision in this you are actually correcting one eye for near and one eye for distance okay so one eye will be able to focus distance properly and one eye will be able to focus near properly this is what is called mono vision and usually the better eye the eye which is better is corrected for distance the eye which is a little worse than your better eye will be given near correction so this will happen in case of mono vision mono vision after cataract surgery you are given eye wells these both eye wells have different powers one is for distance and one is for near okay now you 
also have some surgeries for presbyopia. Okay, just need to remember the names of those surgeries. One of them is anterior ciliary sclerotomy. Okay, one is this, another is your scleral implants. These are actually collagen bands which are inserted into the sclera. Okay. And third is something which is called conductor keratoplasty. In this conductor keratoplasty, what they are going to do is they are actually going to alter the cornea rather than working on the lens. They will give certain laser spots on the cornea which will lead to shrinkage of collagen. And because of the shrinkage of collagen, the curvature of the cornea is going to change and that is how your presbyopia is going to be corrected. Okay. So, conductive keratoplasty. So, these means you must remember surgeries for presbyopia. However, these surgeries are still in process of coming into the real picture. Okay. So this is all about presbyopia. Now the second error of accommodation will be insufficiency of accommodation. You must not confuse here. I told you presbyopia. That is also a kind of insufficiency of accommodation. But what is the difference? That is an age related process. That is physiological. However, this is not compliant with the age. So this can happen also in a 10 year patient. Okay. 10 year old patient accommodation is insufficient. Okay. So insufficiency of accommodation is not equivalent to breast biopia. This might be due to several conditions. It might be due to a debilitating disease. It might be due to certain drugs. It might be also due to some problem in the brain, third nerve, internal ophthalmoplegia. So these are the conditions which will give rise to an insufficiency of accommodation. So there is a difference between presbyopia and insufficiency of accommodation. The third thing which can happen is that is spasm of accommodation. This is overactive accommodation. Okay. So what will happen if you are trying to extremely be accommodative? You will have a strain on the eye and you will have symptoms of asthenia. So this is spasm of accommodation. This is mostly due to drugs. And sometimes what will happen is that, you know, patients who are trying to do a lot of inter, uh, near work, they are trying to concentrate too much using a lot of accommodation. So your accommodation is in a status of spasm. So what can you do about this? You can just, you know, relax the accommodation. By means of certain drugs, the cycloplegics, you can give cycloplegics like atropine and you can relax the accommodation okay and you can also ask the patient to restrain the near work for a few days and that is how the spasm of accommodation is going to be corrected okay this is the word error and finally the last error of accommodation is paralysis of accommodation. Okay. So your accommodation is going to get paralyzed. It means your ciliary muscle is not working at all. Okay. So there is no accommodation. Why this happens? Again, this is because of some drugs. Okay. This can happen because of some diseases like diphtheria it can happen in cases of meningitis and some stroke okay so your accommodation is totally paralyzed right so these were the errors of accommodation so how can you correct this paralysis of accommodation? If when the disease can be corrected, your accommodation will automatically come back and these drugs, the offending drug is removed, your paralysis of accommodation can be corrected. This is also called 
cycloplegia. So these cycloplegic drugs are often prescribed by first it is given for refraction because you want to completely relax the accommodation before checking the refractive error of the patient. Okay. And sometimes this is also, I told you it is given in case of spasm of accommodation. For that it is given. And sometimes it is given in cases of convergent squint also. So why it is given in case of convergent squint, I will tell you a little bit. So what happens is, I told you that with accommodation, there is also some amount of convergence. Okay. Some amount of convergence will also be there. So if a person is trying to accommodate too much, also there will be too much convergence. And your eyes will become close to each other. And that is how they will go into a tendency of squinting. So if you relax this accommodation, automatically your convergent squint will get corrected. Okay, that is why sometimes you get a convergent squint. Again, we will have a very important concept here of AC by A ratio. Okay, AC by A ratio means accommodative convergence by accommodation. This ratio is 3 is to 1 to 5 is to 1 in normal patients. So, 3 parts of accommodative convergence and 1 part of accommodation. There are only, there's actually, there are actually many methods, but I will tell you 2 methods gradient method and hydroporia method for your MCQs. These are the 2 methods to measure this AC by A ratio. So, normal is 3 is to 1, 5 is to 1, and these are the 2 methods to measure the AC by A ratio, most important ones. So here we finish off with the errors of accommodation. Hope you understood accommodation. Now I'll move on to my next topic, which is last class again you must remember what is hypermetropia so again the same kind of cornea lens retina what is happening in hypermetropia the rays of light coming from infinity are getting focused behind the retina why this can happen again axial okay the eyeball is too short with a small eyeball the rays will get focused behind the retina. Again, refractive. Have two categories: curvature and index. In curvature, what will happen? Either your lenses, either your cornea is flat, or your the curvature of lens is flat. Lens is a very rare circumstance. Even the cornea is flat only in one condition which is called cornea plana. It is also very rare. Okay. Index is when your lens does not have enough refractive power. That can happen in some stages of cataract. Where is what happens? Where is what happens with that? Your cortex, this will have more refractive index than the nucleus. So the overall power of this lens is less. And that is why you have index. The third category is again positional. In positional, your lens is actually placed behind. So the rays of light will get focused behind the retina. Okay. So axial refractive position. These are the three things. Okay. So this is the classification of hypermetric. So I request you to go back to my previous video for a better understanding of both myopia and a hypermetropia. Okay. So what will happen in this? Okay. So my rays of light are coming behind and getting focused. But I just told you that we also have something called lens. Okay. So the lens will increase its convexity and try to 
put the image on the retina. We can do that, right? But the problem will be that too much of contraction of ciliary muscle. What will happen? Asthenopic symptoms, too much strain. These patients will have a lot of acidemia. Okay, first. Second thing, I told you, these patients will try to uh, have try to converge too much, have a lot of accommodation. They will have convergent squint. Okay, children. Third, because of the refractive error to focus, they always keep rubbing their eyes. So they have a lot of thing, uh, things like blepharitis, phalasia. Okay, and one more thing is that this sharpness of the eyeball most of the times is not just confined to the eyeball, the length of the eyeball. Rather, your cornea will also be small. So times, sometimes you can have something called microcornea. Also, your angle of anterior chamber will also be shallow. So these patients are more predisposed to angle closure glaucoma. Okay. So these are certain things which might coexist. And they'll have asthenopic symptoms, convergence of squint, blepharitis and chalizia. So that will be your latent hypermetropia. Accommodation is able to take care of it. Some amount of accommodation cannot be taken care of accommodation. So that will actually manifest and that is why it is called a manifest hypermetropia. So obviously from my knowledge, the previous knowledge we will understand that if a patient is young, they will have a lot of accommodative reserve. So most of the accommodation will be latent, can be covered up by the accommodation. However, Manifest is the one which cannot be covered by accommodation, so it will get manifested. So in young patients, most of the amount of hypermetropia is latent. But as the age increases, it changes to manifest category. Okay. Now this manifest can further be classified into absolute and facultative. Okay. This facultative is also something which can be covered up by accommodation and this absolute is the one which cannot be covered by accommodation at all so absolute and facultative so total hypermetropia latent manifest can be classified into absolute and facultative okay. so when you're trying to correct the refractive error of these patients, especially children who have a lot of accommodation, what you must do is you should use cycloplegia. Okay? You should use cycloplegia. That is, you should paralyze accommodation so that you don't have any accommodation and you're able to measure the actual refractive error of the patient. Okay, so cycloplegia. So the, what these drugs are going to do? They are going to paralyze your accommodation. These drugs can be atropine, which is most useful for children. Usually a 1% ointment should be given, MCQs. This is used for 3 days. This will paralyze the accommodation and you can actually, actually measure the amount of refractive error of the patient. You can also use drugs like cyclopine, pentolate, and tropical mind. Okay. I'll take your classroom drugs and detail sometime. Okay. So cyclopatia, atropy, cyclopin, tropical mind. These are certain drugs. Okay. 
on your waves and you pull this behind. You want to actually increase the refractive power of the eye, right? You want to increase the refractive power of the eye. What do you do? Put the convex lens. So, the rays will converge more and they get focused with the retina. Okay? These are also called plus lenses. Again, how do you recognize a convex lens? First of all, this lens when you touch, it is going to be thinner at the periphery and it is going to be thicker at the center. Okay? And when you try to move this lens in front of a text, the letters are going to move in the opposite direction as the movement of the lens. Okay? So how do you recognize? The letters are going to move in the opposite direction of the lens. Okay? So again, you can use spectacles or you can use contact lenses. Same thing with spectacles, cosmetic blemish, with contact lens, most important problem is infections. Okay. Like myopia, you also have some surgeries for hypermetropia. But again, these surgeries are not as effective as they happen in case of myopia. So first one, you can also have a hyperopic lasik. Okay, you can also do conductive keratoplasty. The way I explained you for breast myopia, you do conductive keratoplasty. And there's something called Columbium, Yark, Laser, Thermo, Keratoplasty. But again, these surgeries are not as great, they do not have that great outcome the way we have in cases of myopia. So, hyperopic classic, conductive keratoplasty, Columbium, Yark, Laser, Thermo, Keratoplasty. So these are, these are the surgeries which you can perform for hypermetropia. I hope I am clear today. My topic, Competition and Hypermetropia. That's all for today. We'll come back with another lecture on astigmatism in my another class.